Father, we pray that you feed those who are hungry, clothe those who need shelter, heal those who are sick. Father, under the sound of my voice, I pray that people are uplifted and strengthened and encouraged in your word every day in your word. To know your word, to understand your word, to live your word, to exercise your word, to prove your word to be true. Father, I love you. And so many of your children love you. So many people have fallen short of the glory, but you, but you are God that never forsake us and never leave us. You're the God of Israel, the God of Abraham, the God of Jacob, the God of Isaac, the God of Moses, the God of Yeshua Hamashiach. There's no other God but you and only you. You have set so many people free. You have healed so many people. I have faith and trust that you can heal all those in the sound of my voice. Deliver, bless, uplift, and encourage. And with that faith and trust and belief, I release it upon the listeners. And I pray for peace. I pray for peace that surpasses all understanding to engulf those in the sound of my voice. I pray for the love that covers a multitude of sins. Psalm 23 in my heart. Um, we all know the famous Psalm 23. I'm going to read it real quick and I'm going to explain to you what the Father has placed in my heart. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. You make it be lying out on the green pastures. He leads me beside the still water. He restores my soul, he leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thou rod and thy staff to comfort me, thou prepare for state before me, the presence of my enemy. Thou anoint my head with oil, my cup run of over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. At this time, the Father wants his children to know that he's preparing a table before you in the presence of your enemies. Everything that your enemies have done to you, Everything that the enemies have said behind your back, gossip, rumors, every delay, everything that the enemy had his hands in or her hands in to try to bring you down. Everything that the enemy has done wickedness in his heart or her heart towards you or towards anything in your life. The Heavenly Father is preparing a huge table before you in the presence of your enemy. And he will anoint you with oil, oil, fresh oil of gladness, oil of joy, oil of peace, of prosperity. And your cup will run over. And goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life. And you will dwell in the house of the Lord forever because you will be glad. You will see the power and the glory of God working in your life. You will see the Spirit of God upon you in areas in your life that you never expect for God to enter and to show who he is. You will see, you will testify, you will bear witness to the power of God. They said we need a seed of mustard seed to move mountains, just a faith. Seed as small as a mustard seed to move mountains. That's all that's needed. And because your faith, whether it was a short faith, small faith, it was a faith that gathered years, the Heavenly Father sees our hearts in all that we do, all that we say. Everything is recorded. There's not nothing that's left out. Everything's recorded. And we are we water according to our deeds, whether good or bad. We reap what we sow. The harvest is full for his picking. And the righteousness. And the Father rains down on the just and the unjust. This is divine order, divine nature. Even in nature, nature tells you what the Father has given us. In nature, we reap what we sow. So that's why we always must plant good seeds. No matter what situation, no matter what your enemies do to you, you must always plant good seeds. Always. Because you will be judged as well. According to your deeds, so when the harvest is full and the Heavenly Father blesses those according to our deeds, you will be blessed. You will be blessed in all that you do because the Father knows your heart. And what's written in the tabernacles of your heart tells you who you are at the time and your spiritual growth and your development. And you want to be in a place where the Father can continuously to bless you. You want to be in a place where the Heavenly Father continuously to uplift you, to keep his hands upon you, to protect you and guide you 
especially during these times and days that we're living in. Only the God of creation can uphold you. Only the God of creation can heal you. He created everything into existence. There's nothing that's not in his hand. He has full power, full authority, full control over all things. The bad and the good, he allows what he allows. That's why we all must seek his favor in everything. We all must be righteous in everything, in good, in deeds. We must follow his laws, his commandments, his divine precepts, which you can ask to be written in your heart. You ask the Father, Father, place your divine precepts and your statutes and your commandments in your heart so I can obey. And he will write it in your heart. And you will live a righteous life according to his glory. And you will see the power of God moving in your life and everything in your life will be touched by his hand. You see, there's one thing that we all look for. We all look for proof and evidence of these words, even these words that I say, even the words of the Bible, we all want to see if it's real. How are we going to know if it's real if we don't exercise the truth to examine it and in all its contents to prove the word of God to be true? If we don't take that first step and to see in these words are true, then we will never know the true power of God. We will never know the Spirit of God. We must act accordingly to all His precious deeds and what He wants for us and the deeds that He has sowed in us since we were young. Some people believe that it's a fairy tale to be good in a world that's upside down, evil, running rampant. God is still in control. We reap what we sow. I read scripture, I think it was Thessalonians 2, um, chapter 2. God sends a strong delusion. A strong delusion. The Heavenly Father will send a strong delusion for the wicked to believe a lie. It's in the Word. It's in the Bible. Why would a good God do that. He will only do that for the wicked, whose contents in the heart is nothing but wickedness, and who chooses to be in a world full of judgment. The world's being judged right before our eyes, and we pretend we don't see it. We place names upon things, we place events, and we make excuses for what judgment is until we'll personally face with judgment. We know that there's a creator who created existence, life and death. There's no one who can escape it. There's nothing in his creation that can escape that process. There's a divine intelligence who created that process. We must be fooling ourselves to think that we're exempt from it. I tell people all the time, it doesn't matter your color of your skin, your race, your nationality, doesn't matter your level of education, how much money you make. When your time is up, the earth doesn't ask you what color you are, what nationality. The earth and the dust and the earthworms that eat and decay your body doesn't ask what type of degree you have. What did you do in life? It would do the same thing it has done to so many of what God has commanded the earth to do to every human flesh that came and went. There's nothing that can escape this process. So let's not fool ourselves. That's what, why we must examine the word of God and be real with ourselves and look into the mirror and ask ourselves, are we truly living or do we truly want righteousness and to be good at a time that this world's being judged and evil is running rampant and everybody's doing evil and everybody wants to do evil. Would you be the one to stand up with your light shining bright on the hill set apart? Would you be that one? Today's post 
Our Father prepares the table before us in the presence of our enemy. You will see these words come true in your life. This is worldwide. For all the things, the oppression, everything that the wicked has done, everything personal to global situations trickling down to a singular person, the Heavenly Father will prepare a table for in the presence of the enemy. We will see the Spirit of God moving. We will see everything that He's created in creation come to life. And if you examine the harvest, if you work a farm, if you know about farming, you know that there's a time and a season for everything. This is His creation. This is what He created. So the Father prepared for table for in the presence of the enemy. This is a time to celebrate. Soon so many people will be celebrating, being happy, being blessed in these words, in the Father's words. I say this is a time of celebration and joy to bring praise to his name and lift and magnify his name for these words. My name is my brother E. I'd like to thank you for coming to another daily post of God's ministry. Peace and shalom.